Okay, it says we are live. So yeah, I'm just gonna maybe share to one or two persons and then we can start from there. Is that okay? Okay, bro. God bless you. All right. Okay. Uh, hallelujah. I'm so happy that we can get back to this. So how you been, my brother? How you been? Uh, not not too good. I've been busy and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. so. I know it takes a few. There's so many people you have to meet for the little time you have left. Two weeks, almost two weeks. Yeah, yeah. People have been getting mm -hmm. in touch, and uh, mm -hmm. it gets a bit too much because you want to see people. I, I went to see my sister. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. stayed over, but it it tires you out because you get back and it's so. But I'm okay. I'm, yeah. I'm glad to be on the show tonight. Mm -hmm. So, have you been? Do you feel so far? Does it makes you reflect a little bit on you thinking? Yeah, that's Christianity in Europe. <laughs> Tell me, how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel the same power, the same fire? I just sorry if I ask you this question because now that you you kind of have both world. Yeah. Tell me, how do you feel since you've been back for before you go back again? Uh, well, I, th I think we have more opportunity here because uh, when mm -hmm. I do street preaching here last week and on mm -hmm. the streets, people are more mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. We're actually, I find it. I know it sound it might sound strange, but I find it more harder on mm -hmm. the streets in in Accra. Maybe mm -hmm. in the villages it'll be different when we go into the villages. So yeah, to be honest, I think you've got more opportunity here. But I still I think that uh, mm -hmm. churches here, like when we, I, I don't want to say too much because the government might be listening. But we we had a meeting. I went to a me meeting, and uh, you know the meeting, <laughs> and uh, it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I've been to other meetings and uh, official meetings, church meetings, mm -hmm. uh, and it's been a struggle. And I do feel mm -hmm. like the church is under in, is under, under some kind of bondage in Britain because of this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. uh, are living in fear as Christians. And I don't mm -hmm. think Christians should be living in fear. I know we've got to be practical and wise, but I think mm -hmm. it's gone too far. And uh, it, it's exposed the church. It's exposed the church for being mm -hmm. weak. It's not as strong as it should be. That's what. That's so, my impression, brother. Yeah, because you, you tie into what we're talking about because you now, having seen, do you think the political correctness, the fear of doing something wrong or stepping out, do you think the fear of um, upsetting the government, do, do you think that can be something that can hinder the church a little bit that we don't move? in boldness anymore do you think that hinders well uh, i'll give you an example uh yeah. i went to you you know where i went to so so i won't yeah. say the details. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I went to a house church at a mm -hmm. baptism and i went to an official church and there was a, a huge difference because the house church they were radical there was no fear they were getting mm -hmm. on with what the lord wanted and the official yeah. church it lacked power and passion and the reason is is because of this political correctness and fear so I think that uh, I, I I really think that the church has been captured in the UK. Even, even the Pentecostal churches, they've mm -hmm. been they've been captured by this political correctness, mm -hmm. and it, and it, and it's and it's stifling the church. You know, mm -hmm. we fear we fear to preach sin. We fear to be radical. Uh, mm -hmm. We fear to reach out. We fear to say anything. We don't have a prophetic voice. You know, the nation. The, the the government doesn't listen to the church because the church doesn't have a prophetic voice. When I mean prophetic voice, I mean uh, that the church should be speaking out mm -hmm. and the government should be listening, but the church has been captured. I know there are yeah. voices there, but they're, they're not. Mm -hmm. The church as a whole is not speaking. Yeah, because I'm thinking we're going to talk about persecution. And I'm looking at him thinking, there's such a fear of persecution. We're doing everything possible to, to stay away from persecution. We, because, do you think because we're looking at things naturally, so we are shielding ourselves away. We don't want to ruffle the feathers. We don't want to do anything that will upset somebody because we're looking at things as the natural. Because it seems like and I know you have a bit more experience in this. The people of before, I mean, I mean, many people have said, 
the church is the seed of the masters. So they didn't think about what will happen. They were moved by the spirit and they did what needed to be done. And then the consequences, they left them to God. What do you mm -hmm. think? I, I totally agree, but I think what's happened is we've we've had the 1970s, 80s, 90s, 2000 in the in the UK and in the <clears> West <throat> of materialism, and I think that materialism has made most of the church, which is generally middle class, mm -hmm. comfortable. But now mm -hmm. we're in a season where the church in the West is being tested now because of the COVID-19, and mm -hmm. I think it's it's it, it's exposing the fault lines. Is it? It's exposing. Yes. The yes. fault lines that actually what what was the church over the last 30 years <coughs> has been a hypocritical church that's not really following what the lord says so part of, i think part of this is judgment on the church judgment begins mm -hmm. at the house of god and i think mm -hmm. it's for all of us to mm -hmm. search our hearts of why we're in this predicament and it begins mm -hmm. with the church we look mm -hmm. at the nation we look at the government but the church, has, the church has compromised over the last 30 years. It's become comfortable. Yeah. It's become at ease. It, it's uh, pick and mix. It's pick the scriptures that they like and yeah. put scriptures under the bus that they don't like, like uh, transgender, gay rights, all these things. And I think mm -hmm. it's now time to test. And it, and it seems to me that the future is house churches. It seems to me that the church is going to have, that, that the radical ones, are going to start coming out of the mainline churches and they're going to start mm -hmm. new 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 churches because the mainline yeah. churches all across the line baptist methodist even traditional pentecostal all across the line they're all compromising and i believe and i believe exactly what you I agree exactly what you say the the real church will get back to the house group and on the, on its way to underground anyway yeah. and they will be betrayed by the mainstream ones who yeah. will not begin to talk against us because remember Jesus said to Paul in Acts chapter 9 why are you persecuting me meaning if you touch the church you touch Jesus Christ now the problem is that the world the religious system is the one who persecuted Jesus Christ so yeah. it will not be the world it will be the world in it will be the church the mainstream church in conjunction yeah. with the government a bit like uh, Rome and the Pharisees and all of that religious elite mm -hmm. in conjunction persecuting the real people of God. So as it was before, it will happen again. Hence, that's what we're talking about, this topic about discipleship and mission. And we're moving on to persecution today. Now, we're not looking for persecution. But as it happened, Jesus said it will happen. If Jesus said it will happen, his word is truth, his prophecies, all of them come to be true. Whether it's pleasing to us or not, that's irrelevant. The word of God must be truth because what Jesus said is truth. I just have a, just a, uh, to set you up, I have a scripture in John chapter 6, 16 verse 33. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You see? Yes. So, persecution is what Jesus promised in Matthew chapter 5, in the Beatitude. Oh, oh. He said, blessed are you when they are persecuted for righteousness sake. And then the last one, he says, blessed are you when they persecute you for my name's sake. Oh, oh. So we're reading that from Matthew. I'm just going to read it quickly. So that, um, because the, if Jesus said it, it means it will happen. So in Matthew chapter, mm. chapter, yeah, chapter 10, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. So when you live in the right life, when you're doing the things right in God's sight, persecution will come. People will call mm. you all names. People will, you, you, they will say you, you, you think you're holy than thou and all of those things. That will happen just because you're standing in the righteousness of Christ. And the last one in verse 11, he says, Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. You see, there will be one that is personal because it's standing for right standing with God, doing the right things. And then another one now when you're proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. Mm 
And that now, another kind of persecution will come. Because yeah. you move now to proclaim his name. And that's what I believe we're going to be talking about tonight. Because discipleship and mission, the mission, the end of the mission is not a mission. The end of the mission, the goal of the mission is to preach Christ and him crucified. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, no, I think I think you said it there, bro. You said it. If the Lord has said it, uh, yeah. Matthew 5, verse 10, blessed are they which are persecuted. <laughs> The right mm-hmm. of the sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because mm-hmm. a lot of Christians today, they think, oh, I'm, I'm going to get raptured and I'm not going to get persecuted. <laughs> you know? And it's kind of the get out clause. <laughs> it's the kind of get out clause. But I think I think in the West, I mean, our brothers and sisters in Africa and India, China mm-hmm. are being really, many of them are being killed. And I think mm-hmm. persecution is, is here coming to the West. And I think yeah. what you've just described, I think it's really mm. important what you said, uh, mm. Joseph, is that it will be the church that will persecute the believers because it will be the church. It, like in China, they use the church to persecute mm. the church. They had a state yeah. church to persecute mm-hmm. the house churches. And yeah. it's going to be, we're going to have to start moving. A lot of people are going to start moving into house churches in Britain and in yeah. America. Uh, mm-hmm. Because even in America, the government has made uh, some... Uh, key Democrats wrote a letter to Biden and they said mm. they want all Christians rooted out of the government. Um, so they're coming for us and we've got yeah. to get ready and realize that it, the, the opposition that we're going to get is in the church. These, yes. these people, these uh, wokeites, these modern uh, evangelical, wishy washy evangelicals, they're going to turn on us and tell mm-hmm. us that, that we're not loving or whatever. So we have yeah. to be prepared. So what mm-hmm. I have here is some, some Come on. scriptures to help us to face the persecution. So yeah, you, no, is, you're helping us to prepare us because prepare. it's going to come. Let's go. Yeah, to prepare yeah. us, it's going to come without without a shadow of doubt. It's on the it's, it's it's coming. So we need to be ready for persecution. So I'm just going to give us some scriptures that will help yes. us for that. Two mm-hmm. Timothy chapter four verse seven says absolutely. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. So it says, I have fought the good fight. It's a battle. We have to prepare yeah. ourselves for war. Yeah. It's a mm-hmm. battle. Uh, it, this is not a walk in the park. This is not for uh, sitting in the fields and counting daisies. We're at war, and we have to prepare for the battle. Yeah. Um, so if you go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Yeah. I was going to say, while you were still in, a, in 2 Timothy there, were you in 2 Timothy chapter? Yeah, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I think. Why don't you go to 3, verse 12 for us, please? 2 Timothy 3, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Yeah. Ye all that live a godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. So, guaranteed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amen. It, it, Uncompromised. Go ahead. For those who say it, only the apostles will get have been persecuted, no, <laughs> it says all who live a godly life. So yeah. you've got to get this nice, nice living Christianity, wearing a nice cool t-shirt, playing your yeah. your your hill songs, and it's just yeah. wonderful and it's cool. You got to get that out of your system. We're at war. You're going to get persecuted. Period. Yeah. And the more you serve the Lord, the more it's going to get hotter for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 10. Yes. Spiritual warfare. You want to go there? Why are yeah. you preparing yeah. the next one? Yeah. So Ephesians 6, verse 10. Let's go. So it it's, says... It says, it says uh, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So if yeah. we're going to face this persecution, we have to start meditating more upon who God is. Romans chapter yeah. 1, verse 16 says... I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. He's not ashamed of it. We've got to stop being ashamed of the gospel. Stop being ashamed of our God. You know, uh, the gay people say, you know, they're coming out, they're proud. Well, we we should be coming out saying, you know, praise God. Hallelujah. We're not ashamed of the gospel. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Amen. This is this is so vital. Chapter one, verse seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
God has not given us the spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of love, and of sound mind. So we have to draw on the resources of God in this battle. We have to realize that he, he's given us the spirit of love and of power mm -hmm. and of sound mind. So we shouldn't, yeah. be, we shouldn't be walking around timid. So many Christians are timid at the moment. Yeah. They're being battered down by the far left. They're being battered down by political correctness. They're being bat battered down by uh, the, the lukewarmness of the church. But we must rise up and not be mm -hmm. put down. And they watch the news, and they watch the news too much. Amen, amen, bro. <laughs> because I, you see, you see, fear comes by hearing. Yeah, hearing yeah. by the world. I think what faith comes by hearing. I think what hearing saying, by the word. I think what you're saying is so wise. I'll give you a testimony. When I was in Ghana, uh, in Ghana, Please go ahead. I kept listening because I like I like uh, some things Trump said, not all of it, but uh, I would w listen to the the Republican podcast every day. But it would put fear in me because I'm hearing politics. No, get your mind on the things of God. Get your mind on Christ. Then you'll be stronger in this hour. And I felt Absolutely. a lot better coming to UK. I've been getting back into my Bible and I've been feeling a lot better and moving away from yeah. politics because it will just drag you down, get you discouraged. You, you can shine it's as a great. light. Sorry, bro. America, America is totally divided right now. Yeah. The, those who call themselves Christians, they hate the other side. No, and I said to Christians, we don't take sides. We pray for both of them because those who call themselves Christians, they're not even truly Christian. They're Catholics and they're the Church of America and they're all yeah. types. And the other side, they say they're Christians, but they do all kinds of abomination that we know. Yeah, so yeah. both of them now, they hate each other. So yeah. it's not like somebody says it is the divided states of America. It's not United States anymore. Yeah, so yeah, the, the yeah. problem is that what they've done is they have put up, put off more people of Christianity than ever because yeah. they both don't show, demonstrate love whatsoever. You yeah. see? And, and this is the challenge that we have. Now, this church that you were talking about, they are being used by the politicians for votes. Oh, 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 oh. so that they can get what they want from the government. That's why they back up the government and give them the vote so the government can pass legisl legislations that will go for what they believe. Oh. Now, and I'm thinking, when God wants to do something, trust me, brother, that thing will come to pass. Oh, oh, oh. Vote or no vote, that thing will come to pass. And I believe, my brother, the God is just exposing us, exposing the church because the church has made the science a God. The church is making government a God. So they trust in science, they trust in government, they trust in that, and they trust in the Lord. Oh, oh, by the way, sorry, they trust in the dollar. In God we trust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's very true. sad. Go ahead, brother. It's true. No, uh, I, I totally agree. Wise words, brother. Uh, Haggai. Chapter 2, verse 4. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll get it. Haggai, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And this backs up what you're saying, really. Uh, I don't know if you can find it. Because because the whole thing, I, I'm there. Do you want me to read it, bro? Yeah, yeah. Yet now, be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be, and be strong twice. I like that. Joshua, son of jo son of Jehozadak, Jehozadak, something like that, the yeah. high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. This is powerful, brother. Can you just spend a bit more time on that explaining, please? So, so I think we got to, we, we know all the, like you've just said, all the situations about the politics. We, we know these situations, but we the Lord is saying here, don't look at the politics. Work, work for the kingdom. Build the kingdom. So at this present time, whatever's happening, we know that the what's coming on the horizon. We can see yeah. it. But we've just got to keep our eyes focused on the Lord and on his work. Just be strong and courageous. Build your uh, fellowships. Build mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Reach out mm -hmm. to people. Uh, mm -hmm. Jessica recently got baptized. We saw that baptism. You know, yeah. that, that same day, she got baptized. She was out 
sharing the gospel with people. I know. So we have, to be, we have to be focused on that. We have to be focused on gospel work, gospel ministry, and not be distracted by politics. The Lord is saying, mm. be strong and courageous and get out and do that work. Amen. Amen. Work, work. Because Christians don't understand. They have, they have to be willing to work, even though the Holy Spirit will continue, will work in us. Mm. But we have to be willing and available. In Isaiah chapter 1 says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat of the fruit of the land. The problem is that Christian now, they have almost literally, they are ease in Zion, as you, 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 know, you heard before. So it's like, as it was before, they just continue the same thing. And we don't understand. Jesus said, I must work the work of my father while he's still dead. For the night is coming when no man will work. And now my father has been working and I have been working. Guys, we have lost the sense of urgency. I yeah. don't know if you're going to touch this point because I wanted to uh, touch it for you. To just to lead you on, on it. Do you think we are shielding ourselves from mission? So we are not exposed too much because we're making Christianity as comfortable as we are as long. Because you see, human beings, we love to be comfortable. We are creatures of habit. You know, you go to some churches, I, I, people, I, sit I, this, I, people sit on the same places that they sit all the time. I, I, I agree. Uh, and we make ourselves comfortable so much in our homes, in our churches. Now we're making, we're shielding ourselves from going out because we don't know, we fear the unknown, and we don't, and that expose the fact that we don't really truly trust in our Lord that He will take us there. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, and I think even even churches and church leaders and Christians mm -hmm. are using COVID nineteen and coming on Zoom as an excuse mm -hmm. not to yeah. re not to meet together. And not yeah. to reach out. So they're even using that as an excuse for their yeah. laziness and their comfortableness. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, if you're a believer, there's an old hymn. It says, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my I moments know. and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. And, you know, what is the point if we don't have love? We need to have love in our hearts for our mm -hmm. God and love in our hearts for our fellow man. There are people mm -hmm. out there that are broken and needy. And they need a touch of, of God's love. And so what's the point in living a comfortable life? At the end of your days when you meet God and you say, oh, I lived a comfortable life. And uh, here, are the, here are the seashells I collected at the beach. And God will say, oh, you collected seashells and you had a nice life. You know, he want, wouldn't it be nice to just say, Lord, I helped this homeless person. Um, I helped this homeless person. Uh I, I, I gave some money to help this missionary. I, 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 I actually sacrificed myself and I, I didn't get the best card. I got a mediocre car or a medium car and I saved some of the money and I gave it to, to uh, some homeless uh, outreach that was reaching the homeless. Those wouldn't be things to bring before the Lord. Oh, Lord, these children got saved while I was down on earth because I shared the gospel with them. But if you're mm -hmm. going to come before the Lord and say, oh, look, this is the nice holiday that I had last year, the cruise mm -hmm. that I had, the seashells that I collected. What's that going to do? You yeah. know? So what do you want to yeah. leave as a legacy for your life? Wouldn't it be better to love? I have a sister called Linda Ferry. She's saying it's illegal to see anyone indoors in England and, and I think America, I think. So what, what, what do you think about that? Because the government say, it says it's illegal. Now, Anything for me, this is what I can say to my sister. Uh, all this year until 2019. So for me, I'm thinking, now if I'm a faith person, if the government is hindering me from practicing my faith, because my Bible tells me, my sister Linda, that forsake not the assembling of together with one with another. Now, I don't want to break the word of God because the government is telling me not to meet with people. My sister Linda, if Jesus was here, he would touch anybody in corona, with coronavirus. He would touch them and heal them. This, for me, exposes the fact that we, don't re we, are, we are deemed by the government as a non-essential business. Did you know that, brother? Yeah, yeah. yeah. McDonald's is open. KFC is open. The church... 
is deemed as non-essential business because we, pre we profess the word of God, but we don't have the power of God to demonstrate. So we are, we are, uh, how do you say it? On, um, we're non-essential because you see, I need to meet with my people of God because God commands me to do so. Amen. I need to meet with those like-minded because God ordained me to do so because there's power in fellowship and there's power in obeying in, obe in obedience to the word of God. Brother, I used to say this. Government should come. You know, the, the Pharaoh of Egypt, God, uh, you know, Moses had to speak to him what thus says the Lord. Daniel, God give a vision to a wicked man and the man of God has to explain. COVID can come. Uh, the, the government, uh, Boris Johnson should come to a church and say, can you help us? Can you tell us what to do? Oh, yeah. What is the power? What is the demonstration of the spirit and power? If we all hide ourselves, my sister Linda, where will the world see the power of God in action? Oh. None. So what we do, we just another religious organization go, waiting to go into our buildings rather than going out. And if the government can see the touch of God, you know what? Government will not need a vaccine. It will need people of God to touch the people of God, to touch the people anywhere. And that's the problem. Go ahead, brother. I think, I think um, there's been a running issue throughout the history of the church. And the question is, who's the head of the church? Is it the government or Christ? That's um, it. And Christ is the head of the church. And the office bearers, the elders and leaders, they mm -hmm. are first. their first loyalty is to Christ. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, the Bible teaches, if you read uh, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, the elders are there to teach and preach. And mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to decisions in the church, it's the, it's the leaders that, under the authority of the word of God, that are to make decisions. So if the government comes along, and says mm -hmm. uh, you can only meet for an hour or you can't meet for an hour. And you that, can't sing. Or you can't sing. Well, that's not their authority. They breach their authority. They're not, they're not allowed to tell you you can't sing. They're not allowed. Even if it was the worst pandemic on the planet, they don't have that authority. It, that's for the leaders to pray about it, consult Christ, and to do what yeah. the Lord says according to his word. And if the leaders of the church uh, mm -hmm. submit into the word of God and, and consult Christ, through his word, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they will do the right thing. So the, the mm -hmm. governments have overstepped their authority mm -hmm. and interfered in the church globally and nationally in the UK. And sad to say, not all ministers, but on leaders, there are some in, in Wales that are disobeying the government. But sad to say, many, many leaders are just falling over. And the re reason is there's not a strong doctrine in no. the church at the moment concerning the headship of Christ over his church. Mm -hmm. Christ is the head of his church. No government has the right to tell the church how long they can sing, when they can't sing, when they can meet, or when they can't meet. Once you give them that authority, that is satanic. Satan now has got control of the church. Now we yeah. should try with, that we should respect the government as much as we can and, 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 and whatever the, the Bible teaches. Oh, we pray for them. No problems. We respect them. But when the church, when the government starts to interfere in the church's practice and doctrine, and it is in interfering in the doctrine of worship, in the doctrine of the assembly, in the doctrine mm -hmm. of the preaching of the word, because it's stopping the regular preaching of the word, mm -hmm. then I'm afraid that there has to come a point where people have to put the foot down and say, sorry, Christ mm -hmm. is the head, pandemic and no all pandemic. Absolutely. Uh, Jesus is the head of the church. End of story. Uh, and Sister Linda, she's saying that the LC churches all over the Midlands are giving, uh, are giving, uh, I, I think she talked about spiritual food, stuff and food. Listen, Matthew 4 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Muslims feed the poor, Hindus feed the poor, Elton John feed the poor, they give money to charities. It doesn't mean, for, for us, it doesn't mean anything. We need the word of God to go out in power, in demonstration of the spirit and power. In Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 10, I think, it says, verse 25, it says, do not forsake the assembling of you together. So yes, you're absolutely right. We need to continue to fellowship because the head of the church is Christ, not the government. 
and that's yeah. that's the end of the story. So no, I just want to read a comment because this I like this because then we need to give answers to what's going on. I think uh, if you read uh, uh, Acts chapter four to Acts chapter six, when the church is in conflict with the the government of the time, and then if you read uh, Romans chapter twelve. 13 14 15 yeah. and 16 those yeah. chapters uh, uh talk about government and our relationship yeah. to the government uh, absolutely and then, and then and then read the book of colossians and one timothy and two timothy to get the idea of the doctrine of christ as the head mm -hmm. of the church so we've we're giving mm -hmm. you the scriptures there to go and study and amen to, you know beautiful amen keep going brother so so we've looked at be strong in this time don't be fearful. Yeah. Uh, focus on the work of God. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 and 11 talks about be courageous, be strong. So let's, yeah. let's focus on the work of God and not be distracted by what's happening. And then if mm -hmm. we go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 mm -hmm. and 12. So... You know, I, I was reading uh, our old man, Re 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 Leonard Ravens Hill. Yeah. He was saying that um, the world is not looking for another religion. The world is looking for a demonstration of Christianity, a demonstration. No more religion. Mm -hmm. the, the world don't want any more new religion, basically. So we need to be in that spirit of demonstrating the word of God. Brother, I thank you so much. Because I want... <clears throat> Another thing I was going to say after you have you ready already Ephesians chapter six for what? Uh, verse eleven and twelve. Let me read it for you, please, quickly. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild the wiles of the the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, powers, against the rulers of the darkness on the of this age, against spiritual how spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places hallelujah do you want to speak or do you want me to continue uh Joseph? no 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 basically brother it's um one of the things i wanted to say it, it pains me because i was saying to you we're shielding ourselves from going out people don't want it's like we, we're protecting ourselves do you think because of the lack of discipleship, the lack of people being disciplined, the lack of people knowing the word of God, the lack of people daring to believe what the Bible says. We have now shielded ourselves that we can't even go to mission, so we can't even go to preach the gospel. Do you think that's one, that's one of the problems? It, it is. It is. But, you know, every generation, God rises up people, you know, yeah. and... It's for those, the greatest need of the hour is just like John Knox thundered mm -hmm. the gospel in Scotland to such mm -hmm. a point where it, his preaching was so anointed that mm -hmm. Queen Mary said, I fear John Knox's preaching than I, than I do an army of 10,000 men. You know, wow. and, and so the, the, the church will, can never be defeated. It, no, because because Christ Christ has said He will defend the church, but there will be, and there are being risen up now. There are people in the UK, yourself, and there are others that God has raised up and will continue to raise up. And mm -hmm. as the pressure cooker comes, more and more the persecution comes, and as you just speak the word of God, mm -hmm. it will shape the nation. So mm -hmm. this persecution that's coming. It will, it will put pressure on you. It will put pressure on the true preachers and teachers of the word. But as you speak the word, Come on. the nation will shake under the power of the word of God. Luther said during the Reformation, he was patted on the back by someone said, oh, Luther, you're a great guy. You've done great work. And he said, I did nothing. The word did everything. So we don't have to worry. The, the, the comeback is coming. The, the, yes. the, the, the government is going to shake. The, 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 the lukewarm church is going to shake. Why is it going to shake? Because you, brother, you're going to be pushed into a corner. You're yes. going to be pushed into a corner where the police come to your door and they're going to arrest you because they're going to tell you that you shouldn't be meeting. But you're going to tell them the gospel. And just as you tell them the gospel and they put you in prison, the, 
there are many believers that will rise up and start to pray there'll be many believers. so brother the that what i'm trying to say is that you and others in uk and around the world uh, in america god is, will, is going to raise you up and use you just Amen. to minister the word of god the word of god is powerful and as the church is put under pressure and as you release that word mm -hmm. it will be effective brother so so rejoice that yes. the time is coming for when you and others are going to be put in jail and you're going to suffer for the gospel but when yes. you speak it will affect just like john knox spoke you will yeah. be the prophetic voice that will shake the nation and it yeah. will be on the basis of a simple gospel and a simple proclamation of the word of god so i'm encouraged that you're yes. around that others are around not because you're special not because these are the guys or ladies are going to be special it's because you're going to be faithful to the word of god and the holy spirit is going to anoint it and bless it so prepare yourself for, for yes. getting arrested don't don't try to get arrested i know you won't no people shouldn't try to get arrested people mm -hmm. should, shouldn't try to get the government's notice but they're coming for you uh, mm -hmm. but as you release that word of god it has power mm -hmm. and it will affect the nation so things Absolutely. are going to change things are going to change for the better because there's mm -hmm. going to be a shaking yeah it's it's true it's really That's true awfully, first no persecution brings it's almost like it bring it will bring that revival that is needed because yeah. people don't many many of us don't understand and the funny thing is that it will bring out the boldness that was supposed to be there in the first yeah, place yeah, yeah it's yeah. like you 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 need those things to happen so that you can see i, I believe that's where the world will separate those who are lukewarm those who weren't there in the first place and those who are really there and they will continue to work so yeah. thank you my brother you see, thank you. you see you see the devil doesn't know who he's messing with when god calls <laughs> god when god calls his people he knows yeah. who is chosen he knows who is called up when you yeah. think of when you think of Wycliffe, Wycliffe, mm -hmm. God called Wycliffe. The devil mm -hmm. didn't know he was messing with Wycliffe. Shook yeah. the West. God called us. Wycliffe. God shook the West through us. God called uh, William Tyndale and shook the West through it. God mm -hmm. doesn't know. Uh, the devil doesn't know who he's messing with. God yeah. has called the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. And as these weak things are put under the fire, mm -hmm. they're going to be the vessels that shake this country. And God is going to use you. He's going to use others, and you're going to sh you're going to shake this land because uh, mm. because 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 of this, because those who are truly gods, there is iron in their soul, and iron for yeah. the truth, and iron to stand up and be faithful to their God. And you're going to be faithful. And when you stand up, the devil won't know what's hitting. And this is only the training. So this preparation. is preparation. Amen. Amen. Keep going, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, General Ulysses Grant said this. The mm -hmm. art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is. Get at him as soon as you can. Strike him as hard as you can and keep moving. General Ulysses Grant. Mm -hmm. You cannot win a battle unless you know your enemy. Yes. And the enemy is not the political realm. There's a higher realm. And that is the demonic realm. Now, there yeah. is a danger. There is two dangers. There are those who say, well, the devil is not real. I'm not bothered. I'm a Christian, but it's not really a devil. But then there are others who see a demon when you sneeze, a demon in, in my earlobes, the demons everywhere. There's a de This is a demon, Nike, Nike hat. So those are the two extremes. But we mustn't underestimate yeah. the enemy. The enemy is the devil and a demonic realm. We mustn't yeah. underestimate our enemy. Yeah. Otherwise, if we underestimate that the persecution... Behind the persecution is a demonic realm, then we'll lose the battle because we're not realizing our enemy. And in Ephesians Absolutely. verse 11 and 12, Paul says, be strong. Think about God, verse 10. But then he brings it to, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Now wrestling, if I was to wrestle you, it's not easy. You try to get me on the floor wrestling, I wrestle you. It's not easy. We wrestle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, there's an enemy coming to destroy your family, an enemy coming to destroy your church, an enemy coming to destroy your nation. It's a demonic enemy, and we have to fight with spiritual weapons in this persecution. And I like when he said when you talk about wrestling, he says, stand. 
Stand therefore, because wrestlers, they stand. Yes. And you're standing on what? You're standing on the word of God. You're standing on the rock. So you will not be moved because the yes. rock will keep your feet where they are. Because, because this is the thing. As you stand, you know the arrows are coming against you. You have the shield of faith. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my brother, you're absolutely right. Because people didn't need to understand. You, oh, my goodness. If the rock is upholding you, if the word of God is in you and through you and you are rooted in the grounded in the word of God, you are nothing. That word of God will do whatever it has been sent. It will achieve it. It will do it. It will sustain you and it will keep you going because that word of God has power in itself to do whatever it has, said, it has been ordained to do. And it just need that vessel. So let's absolutely. We're going to stand, brother. We're going to stand. My, bro my brothers and sisters, this is your time. All the things that you've gone through over the years, the suffering, the difficulties, this is your time right now to stand. Amen. To stand against the satanic attack upon the yes. church, upon our nation. Mm -hmm. To stand yeah. in the in mm -hmm. biblical truth. Um, Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Mm-hmm. To Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I mean, I'll read it for you. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So it says, for out, of, for out of much affliction uh, and anguish of heart. Pardon? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So it says, whose minds, haha, the God, small g, the God of this world has blinded. This age has blinded who do not believe lest the, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. People can look at uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, when Satan tried to tempt the Lord and the Lord quotes the scripture back at him. Mm -hmm. um, and, Satan, and that's a very subtle while you prepare the other point, that's a very subtle thing. You, you mentioned it already. One of the greatest deception, Satan is trying to get people to believe that he doesn't exist. Yes, you see? Yes. Because he was a deceiver from the, be the beginning. He's a con man. He deceives you, and he's more subtle than that. I told, I told the people, the Antichrist is not against Christ. He just wants to be in place of Christ. So you mm -hmm. worship him without knowing that you worship. And that's the last temptation was what? In Matthew 4, he told Jesus to worship him mm, mm, because that's all he's looking for. He mm. wants to be like God. So he will come in a very cunning way, subtly, you see. And that's the subtlety. And that's what I believe a lot of people will fall for that mm, mm. because he doesn't come looking like Satan. He comes looking like an angel of light. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see, and all he's looking for is what God is looking for, worship. Amen. Go ahead, bro. Amen. Um, Corrie Ten Boom says, the first step on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. Yes. So we have to recognize. That's why, as my brother was saying, to know the word mm -hmm. will give you, as the Spirit of God mm -hmm. teaches you through the word of God, it gives you discernment mm -hmm. to spot the angel of light. Mm -hmm. You know, the Mormons, I don't know if you noticed, but every time I see a Mormon, two Mormons, <laughs> they look like two little angels. You know? <laughs> but you go into Mormon teaching, and it's the doctrines of demons, you know. So the Jehovah's Witness knock on your door and they seem like really pious people, but it's the doctrine of demons. You know, yes. the can come across as pious, pray five times a day, but it's the doctrines of demons. This woke uh, culture, this popular uh, woke culture where, where the morality is just completely changed now to a different morality. They might try yeah. to make you feel like you're uh, not with it, you're behind the times, but it's deception. But if you know the word of God, you'll have discernment, my friends. To know I, I want to read you this scripture in Hebrews chapter 5 because discernment, we're trying to discern. And this is again to encourage the people. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14, he says, uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, he says, but solid food belongs to those who are of full of age, that is those who by reason of, of use 
have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Yeah. One of the challenges today, my brother, is that many people are not haven't got their, their senses, they haven't been practicing discerning the enemy. So they don't even know when the enemy comes. Mm. You see, they don't know when they don't they don't know what deception look like. Mm. They don't know when the enemy is coming to persecute them or to deceive them because they have not been practicing, they have not been practicing stepping out. Because they're shielding themselves from persecution. They don't want to be persecuted. They're so politically correct that they don't want to know. So the enemy now is completely surrounding them and they don't even know. I remember in the book of Job, chapter 1, it says, When the sons of God came to present themselves to God, Satan was with them. Hmm. But guess what? Only God knew Satan, but the other one didn't even recognize that he was there. Hmm. So, and I believe it's the same today. A lot of people go to church. You don't even know that there's a force amongst you because we have not exposed ourselves to be challenged to discern. So the God of this world will continue to deceive us, coming as a light, and we won't even know it's Him. Amen, bro. And that and that that's on the issue of the end times as well. The Lord says, "Watch, you know, uh, and keep a watch." Uh, yeah. But people are, were sleeping in these end times, not realizing yeah. what's happening. So. Amen. So we've got to realize the who, who our enemy is. It, there's a spiritual enemy, the devil and the demons. Ephesians 6, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 6, verse 13 to 20. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, persecution is coming. It's a promise. Yeah, you but really we have know. to know that Jesus has conquered. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 6, verse... Verse 13 to 20, verses 13 to 20. Hallelujah. So he says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, because the evil day is coming. Amen. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your, your waist with truth, having put on the, the, the breastplate of righteousness, and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, hallelujah, taking the shield of faith with which you shall, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, hallelujah, with all prayers and supplications in the spirit, being watchful, watch, 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 to the end with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints and for me that any utterance may be given to me that I may open my any my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak hallelujah to the name of God this is powerful well I picked up something there brother if you don't mm. mind yeah, yeah. Verse 18, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. You see, my brother, oh. we have not even, the. I feel the body has not even, because of the shielding of themselves, they have not even prepared themselves oh. for the real prayer because prayer is the battle. Remember when Jesus was oh. being tempted? Oh. He said, pray with me. He came three times to the disciples. He said, pray with me, lest you oh. fall into temptation. Our usual prayers in the West, we pray for stuff, we pray for our mother and father and our children, amen. Oh. Because we don't go out, we don't pray for, in fact, we don't even pray for anything beyond our four walls. Go ahead. Um, Albert Barnes says this, no matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that without prayer we shall be defeated hallelujah so, and uh for people who want to look at prayer sorry that's why i picked it up that's why i picked it up because prayer is the battle people know this for you to start praying everything will happen the phone will ring the thought mm -hmm. it will take you sometimes 10 15 minutes to even be really tuning in the spirit you're thinking about a car you're thinking about the bills you're thinking about this as you start praying 
all the flood of thoughts comes to your mind. Yeah. So yeah. you start, it's almost like the enemy is within you. So you have to start blocking, binding your thoughts, bringing your, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter, I think 10 verse 5, bringing all your thoughts captive. That's mm -hmm. one of the first challenges. So yes, prayer is the battle, my brother. Hallelujah. So those who want to do a study on prayer, 1 Thessalonians 5, 25, <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 29, mm -hmm. uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, uh, Amen. 1, Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 26, verse 36, 45. Mm -hmm. Those are scriptures that you can go and study uh, tonight or sometime on prayer. Um, so the belt, Amen. the belt of truth, Ephesians 6, 14. Mm -hmm. says, stand there for being your lawyers girt about with truth, having gone the blessed prey of righteousness. Amen. Uh, so truth there is the idea of sincerity. But also the idea of uh, truth, as in you know the Bible's true, the Satan's lies. So, um, are you sincere in seeking the truth? Are you sincere in standing for the truth? Are you sincere? Because I I thought the word truth there uh, as more of an objective, but if you look at it, there's more of an emphasis there on sincerity that that you're a truthful, honest person before the Lord. If you haven't got that honesty before the Lord. And you're not truthful, then you're always going to be deceived. You're going to be deceiving yourself, and you're going to allow other people to deceive you, the devil to deceive you. Any, any absolutely. Thoughts? In John chapter four, verse twenty-four, the Bible says, "Your God is looking for those who worship Him in spirit and in truth." It means yeah. in spirit and sincerity. And we cannot do anything with God without the spirit of truth in us, because yeah. God is not interested in the amount of works. He wants to know the truth that you're walking into. He wants to know, and the, one of the role of the Holy Spirit, John 16, he said, it will come and lead you into all truth. You yeah. know, there can never be, you know, grace and truth, hallelujah. Grace and truth came together. Oh. You cannot separate them. God has married them together. You can't have one without the other. Otherwise, you can, because you can go out in deception. You can go out in the world with the wrong word because you have not received the truth about yourself, about Jesus, about his word. Yes. So you can go out on a wrong foundation and guess what? You fall on your faces. You know what I'm saying? People fall on their faces. People can go out in the flesh. So yes, truth is vital because truth is the center of Christ. And guess what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. And I think uh, I think if you read uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 where it talks about the man of sin. Is it the man yeah. of sin? And the reason why people were deceived is they weren't seeking the truth. They wanted to be seeking other things. And so they were taken in. But yeah. if you're seeking the truth, if you want the truth, yeah. you're being truthful with yourself, being truthful yeah. with God, and you want the truth, the truth yeah. of, of the gospel, the truth of who Jesus is, you want the truth, you're not going to be deceived. But if you've no interest in these things, yeah. no interest in truth, then you're yeah. just going to be taken down. Absolutely. Amen. Um, then the feet... Uh, sorry, uh, the feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel. I yeah, I'm just trying to find the, the scripture for that. <coughs> Amen. Uh, verse 15. Yeah, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that to go back, the breastplate of righteousness, verse 14. Yeah, that, that is your that that is. Again, it, you're thinking of uh, Christ, but there, it, it's mm -hmm. on about that your walk with the Lord, your tr your honest mm -hmm. walk with the Lord. If you allow sin in your life, if you allow uh, any sin to come in, the devil is going to take you down. Was it Achan in Joshua, the book of Joshua? Was mm -hmm. it Achan that that kept uh, some spoils for himself? I know. You know, and he allowed that sin, and it mm -hmm. affected him, and it affected the camp. The yeah. whole camp, absolutely, the whole camp. So we, we've got to be careful with our walk. We've got to watch our walk. It's very easily to let something in, and then it can bring us down over time. So we've got to be careful with that. Then, Hebrews, 12, then, Hebrews 12, verse uh, verse 1 said, Let us lay aside the, 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 the sin that so easily ensnares us because we yeah. can't run the race. We can't go through this. You know, We have a bit of cloud, cloud, cloud of witnesses watching over us. 
And they could, uh, one thing I receive as a revelation for the cloud of witnesses watching over us, they can be watching and they can be testifying against us because they have done what they could do. Yeah. yeah. We're not picking up the baton properly. You yeah, see, yeah. they're watching. They're watching to see how we run the race. They're watching to see how we're giving up. They're watching to. They're watching everything. Hallelujah. So we need to be careful. Yes, let, let's lay aside the sin and and the weight, basically, so we can run the race properly. Amen, bro. Amen. And then uh, the gospel of peace. You know, yes. do you know the gospel? Do you understand the gospel? Are you grounded mm -hmm. in the gospel? You know. Yeah. One one of the things that I always hear today is that oh Jesus loves us Jesus but the gospel is the gospel is the wrath of God was poured upon Christ for our sin that is the love of God that He took the wrath in in in, in Isaiah fifty three it says He was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement yeah. of our peace was a, you know yeah. by His stripes we healed the Lord has laid on Him the iniquities of us all when Christ said my God my God why have you forsaken me He took the wrath because He took the wrath in uh romans chapter 3 right about 23 to 27 it talks about he's a propitiation for our sins yeah. propitiation. for all i've seen and fallen short of the glory of god yeah yeah and it, and it says the word propitiation modern bible yeah. translations try to take that out but in the king james it has it and there's a reason why because propitiation mm -hmm. has the idea that christ appeased the wrath of the father the father's yes. wrath fell upon him and yes. that is why we're saved we're saved from the wrath to come that yes. is the love of God. But that's the gospel. If you're not grounded yeah. in that, if, if Jesus is, if, if God is, or if Jesus is your huggy buggy, where you, <laughs> your, your cool buddy, who, who you stick thumbs up to your cool Jesus, that's not the gospel. The gospel is he took the wrath that you deserve. Do you, do you think, do you, <laughs> do you think the church needs to go back to the basic terms of defining what the gospel is yeah that that's why i'm why i'm saying about the wrath of god he's not a buddy jesus sticking his thumbs up going like that to you he took the wrath he took the wrath for our sin you, you, you see that's, because people people confuse the love of god with the carnal love yeah oh yeah. it's all about love love they don't they don't know that the love of god was demonstrated on the cross yeah, like you yeah. say, Isaiah, for me, Isaiah 53 is the first gospel, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Amen. So, so do you know the gospel? If you don't know the gospel, you're not gonna you're not gonna stand in these times. You need to be clear. Sack your buddy Jesus. Get back to the real gospel, which he shed his blood on that cross, took the wrath that we. Because deserve. if you haven't got the right gospel, you can't go on a mission to preach the wrong the wrong gospel. You yeah, you yeah. preach the wrong gospel, and yeah. you will make more. You, you'll become an enemy of God because. You're speaking in the name, in the well, name. A lot, of the, a lot of these modern churches, the Hillsong kind of churches, um, yeah. a lot the of people, they come off the streets mm -hmm. and they have, like, I, I've seen this, I've seen this. They have gay lifestyle, they get baptized, and no one's challenged them about the gay yeah. lifestyle or any lifestyle. They, they, God no, loves you. There's no, it's all God loves you. There's no teaching about repentance. Have you repented? Before we baptize you, have you repented? No. Let's just ba let's just baptize you. He loves you. And then they're, they're all walking around and next thing you know, they get, they're having gay marriages and uh, they're leaving the church because nobody told them that when you came into the church, you had to repent before you got baptized. I've seen this in my own family. I can testify in my own family. My sister uh, has uh, you know, is 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 gay, and she she went to one of these modern churches. She said she gave her life to the Lord. They they baptized her, but nobody ever challenged her to repent. To like she, she's married a, a, a lady, another lady, and but if nobody told her in the church, you have to repent. So and the yeah. grace that the grace of God is there is sufficient. God yes. can turn everything around. You can turn her life around, but it has to be humility and repentance. But the problem with the, the gay lifestyle is that they, they, they're proud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so so we, we offer grace and we offer the love of God, but but uh, repentance is not the... We can't compromise on the word. Preach. So, so do we know the gospel? Ephesians 6.16 mm -hmm. says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, Amen. You can look at Hebe uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. Uh, Jesus says, faith is like a mustard seed, Matthew 17, 20. He said in mm -hmm. Matthew 9, 22, uh, faith will make you whole. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, faith is centered on Christ. 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 5, faith rests on God. James chapter 1, verse 3, our faith is tested. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, our faith is precious. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, our faith should be confident. 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 5, verse 7, Amen. Uh, we, have, we, we live by faith, not by sight. And then Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, we trust Christ with faith. Hallelujah. Faith. Don't it's good faith. It's good because, brother, I would like to close in prayer in a minute. If I just comment faith. on this. You can't go out except you're walking in faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. You can't go out except you really understand it's a walk of faith. And faith, the word, Christ, the Holy Spirit are one. Mm -hmm. We need, we're going out as you're going out. We're going out in faith, believing like he promised. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So yes, even if, even if persecution comes, we are to know that he will take us through. He will be with you, with us. He will never leave us nor forsake you. That's his promise, not our promises. He knows what we need as we step out. But he comes to lead those who are ready to move. He cannot leave somebody, he cannot lead somebody who's stagnant. The Holy Spirit comes to lead you, he will lead you. And trust me, he will do what in what is necessary. So we are not to be scared, like you say in, in, in Timothy chapter chapter one, you said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and sound mind. So as we go out in faith, because we live by faith, we walk by faith. God will respond. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have to go out in the demonstration of the spirit and power to the word of faith that we confess. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother. Okay. Yeah. I want you to just close in prayer, if that's okay, my brother, please. Okay. Father, mm -hmm. we thank you for this day. And mm -hmm. we just pray, Lord, uh, bless our brothers and sisters who watch this video tonight. Encourage them, Lord. May it build them up. May it strengthen them, Father. And Lord, help us to have real faith, real love for you, one another. And help us to stand in these evil days. And help yes. us to be a credit to you, Lord, to your kingdom. We thank you that you died for us on the cross. We thank you for this opportunity. I pray for my brother Joseph and his family. I thank you that you've given him a beautiful wife and beautiful children. And I pray that you would just continue to bless his family, continue to bless his ministry, Continue to strengthen him, Lord, and protect him and his family in everything that they do and provide for them in every way. Bless them, strengthen them, and keep them safe. We pray that for all our families and friends in Jesus' name and churches. Amen. Amen. The same to you, my brother. Thank you for being with us today. And tomorrow we continue, guys. We continue tomorrow at 9 o'clock. God's willing by the grace of God. So watch out for this space. Amen. My brother Jay. I'll speak okay. to you tomorrow. God bless. All right. Bye God bye. bless you both. Bye now. Bye bye.